it's Cinnamon Cooney, the Art Sherpa, and I want to welcome you to one of our live painting events. We're going to be doing The Corpse Bride today uh, by Tim Burton. On the mic today is my husband, John. Hey, guys. That's who the voice is. If you're wondering, like, who's that voice? That's John, and John is here for a very important reason. He follows me around with one of our cameras, the robotic camera, make sure our picture in picture. That's right, we have picture in picture works. And he reads comments. Make sure I'm kind of up on the stuff you guys are asking. So if you're like, I don't know what you're talking about. Boom. There it is. So if you're like, I'm confused. And you, you can be writing the live, asking me questions. If you're here on the replay, because these are always left up for replay, you know, your question might be asked. But if it isn't, be sure and put your suggestions for future uh, painting tutorials in the comments below and also any questions that you have. This is a little different than our pre-recorded in that it's John and I is here mm -hmm. and we're a little chattier, a little more relaxed. However, if you've ever been to a painting party, this is gonna feel really similar to you. I expect this particular one to take about an hour 20, somewhere in there, because it's a 16 by 20 and a little more involved. How you doing today, John? I'm doing good. Can I talk any faster? Oh, I don't know. I'm sure you could. <laughs> we could give you some coffee and find out. <laughs> I could use some more coffee, but I forgot to make one of those. I do have oh. water, though, so I stay hydrated. Stay hydrated and comfortable while you Hydrated. So you can see the example painting here. You know we have the picture in picture, but I'm going to be doing this today on the 16 by 20. One of the things I'm going to do is that I'm also going to add some wishes to the canvas that I can paint over and kind of put into the universe. I think that art is an act of being optimistic and hopeful, and I have for a long time in my studio put intentions, wishes, thoughts into my canvas and painted over them. I think a lot of art journalists do this as well. I think probably a lot of us have this as maybe a secret mm -hmm. private practice. It's just one I like to do here, and we like to take wishes from our community um, and put them in because it's really at the end of the day. It's not about me painting. It is about you painting Stunt hands is coming over here to adjust something Cameras see so that's how you know it's live right now live if you're wondering is this live is it really live? Is it is it a pre-recorded live or is it actually live? No, it's live right now If YouTube shuts down this will go away and we have to refilm it <laughs> No, it's not recorded locally. That's right. He records it locally Sometimes we have to refilm those are rough days. <laughs> but mostly John records it uh, locally. Yeah, I record it locally too. You can ask all kinds of questions. They can be art related, non art related. Remember, we've got moderators. Those are the people with wrenches. Mm -hmm. If you see someone have a wrench next to their name, they keep kind of, they kind of have a troll band hammer. So if somebody comes in causing a ruckus, they boot them. They and have... also, they make sure that if there's an important question or something you guys are wondering collectively, they try to make sure that John is aware of that. In, he knows what's going on. If you put your questions in all caps, then they know that's different than just sort of the chat banter back and forth. Other yeah. rule in the chat for those of you that are new to live, because we've had so many new subscribers. Oh, yeah, I know. We've had so many new subscribers. For you guys that are new here, it's your first time here. Uh, chat about whatever you like. Tell jokes. Be funny. You know, we just ask that everybody be nice and respectful to each other. But goofiness and silliness and you being absolutely 100% yourself is utterly required. Absolutely. I'm going to start... Putting the wishes in, I started out with a wish in general for Colleen, son, and Colleen. Mm -hmm. You had some, some other wishes for me. Well, yeah, we have we had some more wishes here for uh, uh, Summer needs some love. You know, she's uh, she's out there, one of our own, and I know I know Honor could use some love too. So we'll send some love to her and D Rose. She's at home with a uh, with severe kidney infection. Healing to to D's kidneys. Mm -hmm. You and know. I'm, Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, I was going to say on that, and I don't want to worry anybody, but my mom was in the hospital last night for um, her gallbladder. Mm -hmm. She's oh, okay. Yes. She's back home, but I want to put a wish for healing of healing of her body and gallbladder. Yeah, there's there's a you know Beverly needs some healing there too for fa for her family. Um, they have some illness as well. General healing to the community. And if we can put one in there for Jen as well, her and her family. And, and you know, I know that there's a lot of wishes out there for you know, who are moving across the country and who, are, who have new businesses that are coming. And we wish all of you guys a lot of success in all of that. And all of our light keepers and wish, keep, wish, wish catchers out there, get those, put them on your canvases, make sure that they're there for everybody. I know that there's a, you know, Cinnamon doesn't get to see the chat, but there's a whole lot of people here. We've got over 180 people here. The room just keeps getting more and more people. Thank hey, you, everybody. guys. 
we love seeing you guys here and and thank you for helping us with all those wishes and such. so uh our materials today mm -hmm. are also in the description below including a link to our website where the traceable is later today i'm going to be sharing with you judah's pdf instructional file on how to enlarge or shrink or change the size of a traceable because i know that's been a mystery for a lot of people and i think she did a really good job of uh explaining that so i'm gonna definitely be sharing that mm -hmm. you can find that and the traceable at the art sherpa.com um we kind of collect all the different stuff at the art sherpa so if there's stuff on pinterest it'll take you there that's where traceables live wherever it is it'll help you find it and i do a vlog uh blog not mm -hmm. a blog this is a vlog i do a blog um and i just wrote a really good one i feel like it was a really good one that you might enjoy reading um, check it out. I try to get in there every day and do something, and it's a really friendly art community. Yeah. Artsherpa.com. Oh, look, 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 I have a button I can push. Let me find it. <laughs> Bing. Look at that. www.artsherpa.com. And look, there's Kevin hugging a boat. Hi, Kevin. Kevin is our Kraken, right. if you're new here. He's a mascot. So what you need to do is take a ruler and all around the edge of your canvas, you're going to want to mark off about two and a half inches from the edge here. So you're just going to make a little line that's two and a half inches out. And then one here, it's about two and a half inches out. I kind of pre-put these in. You don't have to worry about this one too much because so much of her is over this side of the canvas, but it can help you if you want to put that in. I put it in, in a very light pencil when you're doing the arc. Because if you see, like, it's right here, and it goes all the way sort of down, it helped me put in my arc. So that's something that you're going to want. A, mark the middle point of your canvas between these two lines, right? You want to get in the middle space between these two lines. So if they're 10 inches, then right around, or 10 and a half, or whatever, you're just going to want to make sure that you are at about the halfway point in between what you've marked here. And that'll be true if you're on an art journal page. No. Right? And I did give myself a guideline up here just to help me pull my arch out. Now, Sierra, I see your question. I'm going to get to that in just a little bit. It's a really okay. good one. So I'm just it's a good me, question. She's a good question. I'll get to that. I'm going to make a little arc down to the wall and another little arc down to the wall. These aren't really perfect. They're just a general sort of gothic window shape. And then I kind of went every so long and gave myself a little guideline saying stone, stone. When they come to the corners, I just flared them out a little bit so that they curved. I've got the capstone here and a little bit coming out. I, again, don't need the full stone work around because we have this view through the window and we have um, her in the central focus. So she blocks a lot and we don't have to draw it all in. But if it helps you to draw it in, definitely do that. To do her, I'm about, from this canvas, I'm about four inches from the top and I make kind of a large egg shape. This particular face, and it's okay to be sketchy when you're sketching it in, it's also okay. Do you have the reference? Oh yeah, it's also okay to use the reference or reference photos of her, screenshots, whatever you've got. It's okay. Um, when I worked on this, I had the movie on. It's just nice to have references to get the sense and space of something creatively. I'm going to make my face anchors. And what a face anchor generally is, is that I divide the face like about in half and then almost at the halfway point on her face, I'm going to make an eye anchor line. And this sort of helps me keep things symmetrical. Her eyes are pretty close together. Not crazy close, but she's got a very no narrow no nose. They scoop down and make this sort of interesting large almond shape. Her eyes are quite large on the canvas. Then she has these sort of sweet arcing down eyebrows. And I found these to be super important to who she was as a character. I chose um, this moment in the movie with the butterflies because I felt like for her, 
that was the the best part for me is when she let it go. She let go of all these things that she was defining herself by and, you know, let her light take over her and she let herself become who she really was. And I always like messages like that, you know, and I, I wish that for my daughters and all women everywhere mm -hmm. and all men, just everybody. <laughs> so I'm going to come down between, if you look here, about halfway here and then halfway again is how I place her features. So we're going to do a little bowed mouth. Comes up two little, two little bows. I like to put a little smile on it. You could make her sadder if you want to. Her nose is quite small and I actually changed the nose because I was looking at the um, reference and I realized that you could see her nostrils which I didn't really quite catch. So we're going to make that change. You can do it as the orig like my reference, but I'm actually going to be showing these in this because I realized that was more accurate to the character. Her neck is long and narrow and comes down almost all the way to the windowsill and then comes off little arched shoulders, if you can see that arcing over here, and another little arc. And then we're going to do a little mountain. It goes up and up and her hair is pretty nice in that it right from the center line just bring a line up and allow it to flow down almost straight pat behind her shoulder there's another one we don't put the veil in until later and we're going to really try to get the veil even more see-through this time uh, than I did the original time so we're going to have some interesting stuff here's our paint and it's such a simple palette today I have phthalo blue. <laughs> I have phthalo blue. I have alizarin crimson, but listen, any crimson at all, because we only have the one red, and so any crimson or red you have will work for this. If you <clears throat> bought a black gessoed canvas, just use Mars black. If you gessoed a white canvas, I would say use the black gesso. I have titanium white, and this weird milky plop is, of course, my acrylic glazing liquid. I just like this stuff. It slows down the drying time of my paint and allows me to do glazes and tints. And there's not a lot of products. Actually, this is the only one that I know of. If you know another, another one, you can totally recommend it to me. Men up. <laughs> Today. That's okay. I'm I think it was, I, you know what I think it was? The mom was in the hospital last night. I'm kind yeah. of a little... And I'm, I'm, I think, you know, I'm a little uh, shy today. I'm really enjoying reading the chat today. He's reading the chat. Yeah, I think um, we're a little shaken up. She's okay. I'm a little in my shell, yeah. But, you know, it just, it just shook me up a little bit. I think it's what it is. I think mm -hmm. I'm a little shaken up. So, for you guys on the replay, um, oh. usually I'm smoother than this. So Find another video. Don't, ju don't judge. <laughs> what was that cool white pencil that you used to draw all that in? That is a good question. This is Gensel, uh, General's Charcoal Pencil in White. General is a very inexpensive company. You can get these at craft and dollar store, all kinds of locations, art stores. It's just white chalk. I like it because it disappears into the paint. If you use graphite, graphite will seep into and bleed through the paint. Mm. If you want that intentionally, that's fantastic. If you don't want that, it's miserable. Yeah. So it's really about what you want, you know, in your painting. So let's start painting this sucker in. I know earlier you saw a question that you thought was quite interesting. Oh, yeah. So, uh... Uh, gosh, Sierra was asking if when you talk, when you start loading your brush, if you could talk about water control, because she was really wanting to know how much water to put on the brush. Well, there's a bunch of factors about water control. And I know a lot of you guys have asked this, so I'm going to really, really explain this, but I'm also going to tell you the hidden traps that even when an instructor is explaining to you where you can end up being challenged mm -hmm. and not know it, especially on these digital tutorials. Okay. Right. So first thing I've got here, if you see this, this is a number 10 Bright by Simply Simmons. It's extra firm filament. And what that means is these are synthetic filaments, not bristles. Um, this is one of my favorite brushes on earth. This is the Silver Grand Prix mm -hmm. with hog's hair bristles. They're interlocked. It's like, it's like seriously, this is like a Ferrari. Um, anyways, these are bristles. This is a natural sourced bristle this is a synthetically created filament so when you hear artists talking that's the first thing the hog's hair bristles mm -hmm. hold more water than the synthetic filaments mm -hmm. if i were to get um a brush like yeah. this here which has a sable filament right and not filament sable hair so bristle 
hair filament. Bristle holds more water, sable holds the most water, this holds the least water, and is, the, is very firm. Does that make sense? Totally does. Okay, so now I have this firm filament. This is going to hold the least water. I'm also, when I prime the brush or warm it up, which is to dip it in the water and then drag off the extra. This leaves this one damp. Like you don't see it leaving a bunch of water on the palette here, on the palette paper, okay. but it's moistened. If I were to do, let's see, where's that one I just put back that was the, um, this, even when I drag it off, it's still, can you, can you, all right, I don't know if yeah, you can. you can see the water on there. All right, there, you can see it there versus that. Oh, interesting. That much difference, even though I drug them both off. So what's really important is that when you're looking at your brush, feel it. Is it very soft? Uh, another place you can test the amount of water that your brush is holding is on your paper towel. If after you drag it off on the cup, your paper towel is still soaked, you, you probably have a, a hair mm. or a, um, a bristle mm -hmm. or too soft of a brush for the heavy body paint. Now, natural... Uh, hair fibers are are they good for acrylic um the bristles like this brush is bananas for acrylic this this grand prix this one is ideal for oils and acrylic it's like an engineered piece of incredible tech silver brush company if you paint with my mom ginger cook you know she likes the satin silvers yeah um this here is the synthetic filament what this is is this is it's not gonna stain from the paint and it's a, it's a little bit hardy, hmm. you know, and, and economical. Okay. So I know, I know we got to get to the painting. So. Yeah. All right. I just wanted to explain. Yeah. So that's, that's what's going on in, in with the brushes. Did that help anybody? I that did. I think that helped the water control a lot. Now, what, what are you doing? Uh, I've got some more questions for you, but I'm going to wait okay. until we get. So into I'm pulling out my black. I use black gesso because I gesso this black. So you could use Mars black here. And I'm going to pull out my white and I'm going to make a mid gray. Mm -hmm. Right, not the darkest gray you've ever seen, and not the light, and not as light as white. If this was the darkest and this were the lightest, I'd want something kind of in the middle, right? Yeah. And so once I've made that, and I have a pretty dry brush, you can see it's just on the tip of the brush. I'm going to come where I've made marks, and I'm going to just with a very soft pressure do what's called a dry brush over these. There, I'm just... Now, your background here, you said it's it's a black gesso? Yeah, this is black gesso. Now, you could, if you ha if you didn't have black gesso, could you just paint it with Mars black? You could just paint it with Mars black. will still work. Now, if you really wanted to go to the extra, could you use a clear gesso over Mars black? Uh, yes, but it may cloud it. Oh, okay. Good to know. But you could. Okay. And clear gesso is some awesome stuff, and if you have it in your budget to pick some up... I highly recommend having it in your art kit. Now, will charcoal bleed into the paint? Yes. Okay. But not the white charcoal. White charcoal isn't going to affect your paint. But a black charcoal probably could. Oh, okay. That's... Um, if you guys watch Threadbanger, I want you to think of the black grilled cheese sandwich and his bathroom experience after. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much explains what went wrong. That, that so also, you see how I'm creating these very simple stones? I guess you could watch the chromatic black episode to understand that as well. <laughs> 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 so many lessons about black. <laughs> <laughs> so as I'm coming here, I'm going to try to keep these about the same. I'm going to imagine that I'm a stone mason and I'm laying these. Right? Mm -hmm. And notice how I'm just like just letting the black show through and I'm rough with my brush strokes. What this does, I'm going to curve this stone right here. Right, because now we're getting into the curved stones. We're just creating the implied shape of the window. Sometimes what we choose to not put in the painting is as helpful as what we choose to put in the painting. All right, just following along my little sketch lines. Not being a perfect person. All right, my little sketch stone. That one might come off the canvas a little bit. There hey, you go. Oh my gosh, we have over 235, 240 people here. These Thank little stones, do we? Yeah. Awesome. How I'm are you guys pick doing? Up 
some more black on my brush, but not rinse it. See where it's at? Now, if you had, it's I, still got the white on it, but I've added some more black. Yeah. And that this is a darker color than that. See the difference? Oh yeah. All right. I'm mean, right here. I'm gonna make a very rough. I call this sort of a scrumble which is actually technical brush stroke where I'm letting a lot of the black canvas show through underneath, but I'm giving it a rough stone texture. While I've got this anyways, I'm gonna come over here and scrumble over here. Uh -huh. This is gonna take out my lines that I put in, but it's also going to imply the stone nature of the wall. This is called implied texture. If you were to be like at art school, they'd be like, you need to make an implied texture, which in other words is I'm not painting the actual texture in hyperrealism, I'm implying it exists. Interesting. I am starting a rumor about my painting. <gasps> drama on the canvas. On the canvas. All my rumors are on the canvas. Rumors and drama go on the canvas, keep them out of your life. But start a rumor that there's stones here. That makes sense. Does it? <laughs> I feel like such a coup oh, today. Oh, that was the thing. So if, if you have ivory black, will that work? Okay, so yeah, and definitely, definitely check out our big art quest on blacks. But yes, of course, ivory black will work. Ivory black is different than Mars black in that it, you can, it's not as strong of a pigment strength. So um, it's not as easy to overwhelm the white. Oh, that's good to know. And it'll be a little softer, a little warmer. And I wanted to thank everybody who's, who's in here thumbing up. They're all making comments oh, in there. Oh, yes. So. We like our likes. Because you know what we like? We like likes at 300 likes. We are Sherpa. And then I dance. And John comes out and dances. Or, three, or 300 people. We or got, 300 people. Anytime we're Sherpa in any way. Also, nom, nom, nom. We live on likes. Yes, we like the likes. That's, oh, I look. Know. We just jumped it's up so a whole bunch dorky. of likes. We just jumped up to 171 I, likes. I feel like likes. like a fish that eats fish flakes of likes. No, no, no. Do you sprinkle the likes on you? Yes. <laughs> sprinkle sp the likes. Well, we just jumped up to probably 20 likes. So they like sprinkling likes. I like that you like sprinkling likes. I like getting likes. So you can kind of just see how the stone is not a complicated process. You are likely to be very critical of your stones and not as critical of mine. Well, except the one internet troll going? that's going to wander in now and have I a moment. Can, I, can, but, I can find your stones. They're like, oh, there they are. Right? You're way down there at the bottom. Yeah, of the I'm coming down to the bottom and I'm adding some stone. And because I've sketched her in, I know where I don't have to worry about it as much. Now, a nice finishing touch I can do is I can load my number 10 bright on the tip. I haven't even rinsed it with just the black paint. This is the black gesso. But you could do Mars black. And just make sure that I... Put a little enforcing line. See this? Oh yeah. Between the Whoa, stones. Oh, you're fast. Didn't it help? <laughs> Am I fast? You're fast. I was trying to. I'm sorry. Robocam was racing to keep well, up with you. You know, we're we're still faster than a painting party, but you know, we also have Ooh. to recognize the speed of you too. Yeah, slow camera down. Okay. Do -do -do. I'm just what I'm doing is I'm coming back, and where I feel like there's grout lines, I'm defining those in. You're defining those in. Robocam's not. I'm giving right? it up. You can also come behind your stones with this black definition line, and it will just help create space. It says, this is real. You mean it. <laughs> You're not kidding. So Denise is she's saying she's really critical about her stones, and she redoes them all over and over and over again. Yeah. Everybody is. You just gotta, you should let your stones be stones. And, and most people, it's like when, you know, that girl's like a size six, but she thinks she should be a four, and she's criticizing how she looks in jeans. And you're like, oh no, are you so crazy? <laughs> it's like that for most people with their stones. They're a size four, but they think they should be smaller. Or six, or just something different than what they are. So I've just created a little scratchy defining line. Not being very specific. And here's a fun thing. I'm going to wipe off my brush, brush, but not rinse it. Okay. And I'm going to come over to my phthalo blue. Now, if you live in a place, I might even grab a little more black. Um, if you live in a place that does not have phthalo blue, you can absolutely get away with Prussian. And you have to scream, why, universe, why? Why? Why would they not let you have that blue <laughs> what i don't know that I'm seems gonna to, paint it seems in arbitrary the top of the and crazy sky to not this... let people have a, a, one blue over another 
this wonderful dark blue and this sky will actually do more to define the shape of my window than anything I've done up until this point. Remember anytime you make a mistake in um, acrylic paint all you have to do is let it dry, dry it with a hair dryer and then paint over it what you felt like you should have done. So don't get stressed out about the mistakes you feel you might be making. It's always correctable. I really like this month of Tim Burton. Mm -hmm. It's been fun. It really has been fun. Um, I've enjoyed it. So you can kind of see how the blue is changing no. to like a night sky here. And you can use thalo blue here. Uh, no, I am using you, Thalo Blue. You are using Thalo Blue. I'm saying if you don't have access to Thalo Blue, like um, some places they just don't have Thalo as a color. Yeah, it's okay to they use other ones. Use Prussian. Yeah. Even use Ultramarine if that's all you have. Because this is such a limited color palette, um, it's not monochromatic, but it's darn near. It uh, allows you to change things up to make it work into the color palette that you have. I highly recommend you guys make this week's big art quest hmm. because it's really going to be about making your paint work for you. Oh, yeah. So we've got this nice contrasting night sky that's happening behind her. I'm adding and dragging off. I put a little moisture on my brush because it was getting too dry for me. So that's what's happening there. Like I'll go in there and I'm going to let you know cuz and you I'm going to drag it off, but again because it's the firm filaments, it's not going to hold that much water in the first place. If today while you're painting along, I don't want you to stop painting if your brush is holding too much water. The fix for that if your brush is holding too much water is drag it off on the cup and then wipe it on a paper towel. Gotcha. That's what we used to do in the painting party industry when they would buy brushes that were too soft for the job. So I wanted to let you know, you've got, you've got over 250 people here and 220 likes. The people really, really loving seeing what's going on here. And there's a lot of love happening for you out Thank here in the you. chat. Thank you. Sorry I'm a little on. bit weird today. I don't think you're being weird. I feel a little weird. I, I, I think that there's just a... More it, than my usual weirdness. <laughs> I think I'm usually a weird person, but today feels weirder than regular time. You know, it... it I don't know what to say. I'm feeling kind of goofy myself. It, yeah, they happen. You they can't, you can't, it can't rain all the time. You can't be... Well, I was never going to be normal. That was <laughs> never happening. You know, Never, we, ever was I ever going to be normal. You know, you know, there's, there's, a, there's one sure-fired way of making the Sherpa feel more like the Sherpa. What? We can make the Sherpa dance. Is it 300? We're not. No, then no. But, but I can make no. the Sherpa dance anyway. It has to be. I, you know me. I don't open Christmas presents early, and I don't dance till three hundred. But we're, we're. What if we have? What if we have aligning numbers? What are they? We have. We have two hundred and forty-five and two hundred and thirty. That's not aligning numbers. Okay. You're so goofy. Well, they're <laughs> both really good numbers. So the next trick I'm going to do to finish out my sky is. Oh, there it is. This is an interesting little bugger. Okay. This is called a dome brush. You can get these in the craft paint section. So, like, if you were in Michael's, there's the fine art section, and they have all those brushes. And then a couple aisles over, there's all the craft bottles of paint and the chalk paints and the deco and Mod Podge, the Martha Stewart stuff, and a row of craft brushes. Mm -hmm. A couple bucks. Right? That looks pretty neat. Yeah. And this is a 5 8 dome. They come in a bunch of little sizes. I've got a teeny tiny one I'm sure I'll be using that's a quarter inch. The Again, package was just a couple bucks. The trick to this is, is I'm going to load it, it. This is a bristle, mm -hmm. by the way. It's a natural bristle. And I'm going to load up the brush. And I'm going to put my glazing medium on this so that it's a little uh, translucent. And I'm going to come here, and I'm going to put in a cloud. And I'm going to make little circular motions. Do you see my little circular motions? I do. Whoa, whoa. Up and down. Up and down. Look how I go up, 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 and then I wander down. And then I come over. I'm making a shape that delights me. I think that that's my trick to clouds. 
is be delighted by what you're doing. Little circular motions. And then when you come across here, just come across the bottom, flattening it out mm -hmm. so it's nice and level. Like there's an air current. That's what you're doing. So they're very interested in the dome brush. Oh, I love the dome brush. They think the dome brush is pretty cool. The dome brush is the easy cloud brush. Is it? Yes. So what happened to me is that I had a cloud brush, I don't even know where he is, that I use, but I've never been able to find this brush again. <laughs> I use it for splatter, I use it for a bunch of stuff. It basically, it does this. And then I found these and I'm like, oh, that does everything my other brush does, but I can get them anytime. And, and you can get them anytime. They think so, that, that that's pretty cool and that you should you should make it do some more of their little cloudy things. I'm gonna make do some more little cloudy things. So my pressure is very light. My paint's still a little bit wet. Is it important to put the clouds uh, on a wet sky? It helps. What will happen is if, if, if the sky isn't wet, your clouds will be very bright. But if you want nighttime clouds, it's nice to have a little bit of the blue paint coming in. Just make them, you know, and you want them to get narrower and narrower as they come out, right? So he's getting narrower oh, and lighter. Oh, yeah. So he's just barely there. He's just, he's just reaching a little cloud toe out. Now you could, could use a sponge if you didn't have this? Yeah. Okay. There's a lot of ways to do clouds, and sponges are perfectly fine. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to put one peeking up here, coming from behind the window. You could even add stars to this sky if you wanted to to make it feel uh, more nighttime, if you liked. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna switch to my smaller brush because I wanna make a little cloud. You're gonna make a little, wait, which little brush are you getting? Here's my smaller brush. I haven't even put it in water, like I just scrumble it in. These are really scratchy brushes. This would clean stuff off a pan <laughs> for you. Right, I'm just gonna do this little guy. I'm gonna use the combination of these two to create now, where did you get the dome brush at? I just said that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Think, I think that just I'm reading the comments as they come. Oh, okay. Michael's. These came from Michael's in the section where the craft bottle paints are. Okay. Thank So, thank you. I'm <laughs> I'm sure that, like... Sometimes I don't know if you're just, like, trying to hint to me or, like, <laughs> I'm like... Well, I think what happens is that sometimes I, you know, like, I, just like people in, in, in who are watching, right? You're, you know, like, you're really drilled in on one part of what you're doing. I like, am. I'm so drilled in. I know it's a problem. Or even, like, watching. Like, I'll be listening to you talk. You'll say, I buy this dome brush at Michael's. And I'll be like, where do you get the dome brush? <laughs> <laughs> so for this next bit, you could use this number two flat. In general, I'm not a fan of flats, but sometimes they're very useful. And in this size, this shape, it's almost like a shader. Shader is another good option. Number four bright is good. What you want is a small brush with a very sharp edge for this next bit, for this next job. Are, now are, I've dipped my brush in here and I'm dragging off the water. Uh oh, are we? Oh, we are not, but they are insisting that you do a little cloud dance because everybody thinks the Sherpa should be dancing. And that they say that after all, I do control the mixer. So you don't really have much of a choice, do you? I don't know, I'm dancing. <laughs> And thank you guys for coming and hanging out with us. I, we really do appreciate you guys coming. And we've got like 250 people here, 250 likes. We really appreciate it. Don't forget to post your pictures. Likes, nom, 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 nom. Yeah, don't forget to post up your pictures nom, on Facebook nom, or nom, on our nom. website, all those different places. Take that little opportunity yeah, to Yeah, Archerva.com, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest. All those places. All those places. So I've loaded up some paint into my brush. I've got it kind of in a nice little bead on the edge here. And I'm going to make the letter C, like I'm on Sesame Street. Oh, neat. Make the letter C. It will get you through. It does not need to be perfect. You guys are so funny, because you'll do these beautiful <laughs> moons that are so perfect, and you're like, oh, my moon makes me so mad. And I'm like, your moon's so much better than my moon. <laughs> How y'all forgiving my moon and like giving your own moon grief? You'd be crazy. So I get it in, and then if I have a boo boo, like I feel like I've got a little boo boo here, mm -hmm. I just rinse out my brush and I come and I get the dark paint. In this particular case, because I know I'm gonna be doing a halo, I'll just smudge it out. See? Mm -hmm. Just don't feel like, don't give yourself angina over mistakes. 
<laughs> you know, don't do that. But just know that everybody makes them, right? That's mm -hmm. just a mistake in a painting is just, oh, here's a very important thing. You guys with me? Mm -hmm. We're here. A mistake in a painting is only defined by what you didn't mean to do and you don't like. And, oh, push wrong. Look, I push yes, wrong button. meaningful palette. Meaningful palette. I meaningful meant to push palette. this button. This is, I'm going to write a blog about this. So here's the deal. Like when Bob Ross, there's no mistakes, happy accidents, because he just knew he could make anything work to him, so he didn't really have mistakes, did he? He's like, oh. ah, I don't know what's up. I'll just make a tree. It's all good. Right? When you have as an artist, when you're doing something, your artwork could be on point. It could be hyper-realistic. You'll hear this artist go, I made a mistake. Mm -hmm. It's not that he messed up. It's not that there's a right or wrong in art. What we're trying to talk about is that something happened inside the painting that I didn't intend and I'm not in, I don't want. That's all it is. There's no right or wrong to art though. Your there art isn't? is not supposed to look just like mine. If you paint it differently, you didn't make a mistake. As long as you're sitting in your piece going, yeah, I kind of dig it. It's a win. That's so, just what it is. So no. something important to think about. I have taken some of my blue with my black and I've loaded my brush up to about here. It's number four bright. And I'm going to pull a little white out because I want there to be the slightest little haloing to my moon. Get a little more blue. And how I'm going to do that is very lightly paint this around my moon. See this? It's a very light stroke. I'm allowing a lot of the paint underneath to show. Put some light in there. I just feel like I really like the moonlight around here. Oh. So there's there's a, there there's a couple of people who are commenting how they really appreciated taking the time today or having kind of a kind of having a bad day, and needing some cheering up and they appreciate their Sherpa time. Oh, and I, you know we've been kind of having some. As a matter of fact, Sherpa, you should make heart hands if you're tied if you're chained to your easel and we're making you work too hard. Oh my goodness! I'll tell you what, pain on the bad days. I do. John will yeah. tell you. I like if it's a rough day, four paintings, five paintings. <laughs> Because somewhere in the painting process, I'll resolve what's happening internally mm -hmm. while I'm externalizing on the canvas. And yeah. it's completely worth doing. Um, I like getting up here sometimes when I'm not in a perfect space or maybe I'm not having a perfect day. Today is not a perfect day. But it's a perfect day to be with you. And I know you're having that experience sometimes too. And we can just do this together. It's completely cool. Yeah. You know, that's, that is one of the beauties. I got my quarter inch dome. I'm going to load it up with some white and a little glazing medium. I get this glazing medium at Michael's. I know it's sold out a lot now because I talk about it. I am not partnered with Colton <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> They're not giving me no cash. I just wish I'd known about this my whole life. Yeah. Just wish. Really like it. Favorite little thing in my studio. And I'll tell you if I find something good. I won't hide it. I won't fake it. Are you just highlighting those? I'm going to take this and just come over the top and put... The sea moon has light, right? Oh, yeah. Where would the moon's light be? So very lightly. See how light it is? It's like I'm tickling my canvas. Tickle your canvas. Oh, Give it a giggle. And Jeremy is a new painter with us. He found Hi, Jeremy. us. Jeremy. He found us through the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Oh, Jeremy. What a good day to find us. This is, we're usually more on point towards that. <laughs> <laughs> Today's a weird day. But I love painting her, so I know I'll feel better at the end of this. I'm going to make another little bank that catches some light oh, to yeah. give my cloud some shape and three dimension. But my trick here, I hope that the robot cam can really catch the up close of this. I can get is about tickling my canvas. It's so closer. light, and that's how I get such a small tactical amount of pigment on here. Whoop. See? Doesn't that feel like a fluffy little cloud? It does. I'm going to come here and just... Yeah, and another little fluffy little cloud. There's this idea I had, like, after I designed it, too, that I want to share with everybody, but only if they want to see it. But it would be really cool. If they want to see it. Make this maybe even a cooler painting. If they don't mind the extra time. I'm going to assume they're all going to go, yeah, what is it? <laughs> what is it? What is it? Well, I feel like there's this. You guys have seen me do a lot of splatter stars. But you haven't seen me do the other way of doing stars, oh. which are super easy. Oh. It might add something to this composition. More stars. It's an experiment, though. It's a risk. Should we take the risk? We're live. 
We could take it, but <laughs> should we take it? We take nothing but un- unnecessary risks on we this show. Take risks. <laughs> there's no, there's no alligators at my feet. That would be risky. Oh, you know, they're faster than you think. <laughs> it's true. They're very fast. <laughs> So see, now I've got my little clouds, and they're feeling a little bit fluffy. I'm going to rinse this out and then dry it off on my towel and put it aside. I'll show you my trick. Okay, show us your trick. I've got this is fluid paint. Um, yes. Craft paint is also a type of fluid paint in that it doesn't have heavy body uh, polymer to it. So what this is, this is all the pigment. This is different than everything else in that this is super loaded with pigment. Yes. Super loaded with pigment, and then it has a soft body, self-leveling lake. Lake being what they put the paint in. So, so a lake is the ter- the technical term for the the the, the carrier yeah. body of the pigment yeah. or the, of the paint. Uh, oh. And then if I'm wrong, Golden will let me know. I'm sure, <laughs> <laughs> or somebody will write me. But yeah, no, You'll that's what I've been somebody. saying my whole life. Um, yeah, so that's the polymer medium that it's in. Mm-hmm. So I've got this. This is a nail tool, nail be- beading tool. You also can find them in craft things. They're like from bossing and all kinds of different stuff. You, by the way, can also use the back of your brush. Oh yeah, you do that a lot. So one way we can add stars is like this. And I was looking at this the other day thinking, you know what it needs? I think it might need stars, but I'm not sure. And then we got through the design and I was like, I didn't put stars. I'm like, do I regret this? So you guys get an extra feature. <laughs> I can show you how the back of a brush works if you guys want to. Oh, it's yeah, it's shockingly the same. So I'm going to find a small detail brush. This is an incredibly inexpensive small detail brush. Mm-hmm. From some economy craft pack. I'm going to dip it. And the only difference to my needle tool is I just press a little lighter. Oh, yeah. And that's how I get the different sizes. So it doesn't really perform less well for me. I just have to change the amount of pressure used to apply stars. Gotcha. That's how I get bigger and smaller with the backs of brushes. I also roll it in my fingers to find new spots of paint I haven't yet dispersed. Is that cool? Do we like stars? I I don't know. I like them. Do you like them? I'm a big star. What is the community's feeling on them? They like them too. They like the star. So these can be snowflakes. Come this holiday season, these can be stars. Now, there is a question here. Oh, I have an answer. What is the difference between a fluid acrylic and acrylic ink? Uh, An acrylic ink has um, a high flow lake. So it's almost like a water consistency. So fluid or soft bodied, right? See, the Golden says fluid, Liquitex says soft bodied. It just depends on the company. What they're talking about is the self leveling, but still slightly robust body of the carrier. Hmm. Inks are like water. So, and I think that they have. Um, so, inks are a dye based yeah. thing. And I well, think, not, not necessarily. They? No? They can be. They can be. So they, I, that's a big that's a big bunch of art materials right oh, there. Oh, that's right. There's a whole lot yeah. of that there. Because you have high flow by golden, that is acrylic paint that just goes through your airbrush. Oh yeah. Yeah. Crazy. There's, that's, that's a whole deep well. That's of, a deep well. Deep, deep well. Now you don't have to be so worried about the stars here because we're gonna have her beautiful butterfly, which shows that she's about to transform. And you should not Jackie Chan at this point. You can easily puncture your canvas. I was asked um, recently, and let's see if I have a detail brush and get away with it. Yes, I do. How to do my twinkle stars. Which twinkle stars? How I twinkle my stars. Okay, which star are you going to It was on on? Ian Garland's thing where I was the guest host. Oh, that's right. And I painted all those leaves. Let me get up So I pick a dot and a small detail. This is a five over zero round by Simply Simmons. These are actually easy to get. Miniature brushes work as well. I make a line going up and down, one coming out, another one coming out, and two angles. And that's how I twinkle my star. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Oh, I wonder what you are. Everybody in chat just said that same thing. (laughs) I say it every time I add these stars, and I always do if you've painted with me for a while done any of my many galaxies and more are coming because mm-hmm. um, there's never enough aurora borealis space paints just never, never. N- it's true i like the, n- the next one too 
Oh, I'm so excited. There's stuff coming this week, you guys. So much cool. Pre-recorded, so a little less chatty, a little more drilled down. Just the biz. Just the biz. So see, we've got now we've got a little bit. I know this was an extra detour. I'm sorry. So we're here a little longer. <laughs> you get some extra I'm going to rinse out my brush. And I'm going to pull just my white paint. And I'm going to come paint inside her eye. So there is a difference between this gold. This is a number four break. There, mm -hmm. there is a difference between gold and high flow paint and acrylic ink. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And in a that, world of difference. That's a quest. Yeah, kind that's of. its own quest. And honestly, if you just go to, is it just paint? Justpaint.org covers yeah. a lot of stuff like It'll that. It'll cover that. It'll explain what the difference is. And you know, it's just if you can get it, it's pretty cool stuff. Plus. The golden high flow or a really high quality high flow acrylic can be added to a soft body gel. Which I wouldn't necessarily do with every acrylic ink. They're crazing resistant. They have a, they have a bunch. They're, they're more UV ready and they're more archival. So Luna. So painting this in. Luna, hey. would, Luna asks if, if I can help her get a snack. Right, Luna? Say hi to everybody. Hi. So I'm gonna I'm gonna run it and and grab her a little snack. Okay. And I'm gonna leave you on the big camera. All right, you wanna make me a cup of coffee? I'll make you a cup of coffee too. I talk to everybody for a second. You, well, you can key keep break. Pa you can keep painting. Sorry, this has gone long. I. <gasps> no, we're actually doing pretty good here. I don't think it's, we're we're too terrible. We're. I'm gonna do the hair base. Fifteen minutes in. <laughs> which is really just the pure phthalo blue, all where her hair is gonna go. Oh wait, I still have white. So let's do her. Let's do her bodice. Her bodice? Her bodice, which is her wedding dress that she, you know, was buried in, which is super sad. <laughs> but just paint this part in white. Just just paint her, her tatas in white. There we go. No thumbing me down for that. <laughs> so, you know how John gets really nervous when it's just him at the mic and... Um, I'm drawing something. I have that same experience when he goes in the other room and leaves me to paint with y'all on a live by myself. Not on a pre-recorded where I'm in the room because I imagine we're all together in a small workshop just hanging out. And so that's very comfortable to me that I have imaginary friends um, <laughs> that are with me in a workshop. But uh, the pretend workshop in my studio. Now I've become George Takai. What is with me today? Janine wants coffee too. Oh, coffee's like, so I good. I want coffee too. Oh, I need it, I need it, I need it. I'm a sippy sippy. You're gonna sippy sippy. Um, I, I turned the coffee pot on, by My the way. My diet demon. The coffee pot is on. Ooh. Pumpkin spice latte. That's not a bad idea. Yeah. Some ice cream. You have I cup envy right you know now. What? I can feel it. I, I, I think we need to have like a, a brick and mortar clubhouse where we have like, you know, a coffee bar and like people can come and hang out and paint. Oh, that would be so cool. <laughs> Why not, right? I'm ready for the RV so we just go visit all our friends. I, That's, yeah. How's that? I'm that was really definitely weird. Down I feel like something just fell in my eye, but it doesn't hurt, so I guess it's okay. So now that I have this white and this white in. I'm going to just go ahead and put in the hair. I'm going to put out a little more in my phthalo blue. Listen, it doesn't matter that you paint the exact same brand as me. Nothing on my channel is, I tell you what I'm using honestly and authentically um, without like, you know, an agenda. But you can be painting with whatever you have available to you in your area. You know, don't feel like the break or limitation for your creative journey is you having the exact same stuff. I just like to tell you exactly what I'm using so that you can make better and more informed decisions about what you're using at home. Since we can't be together in the studio and I'm not going through your art box going, yay, 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 nope, <laughs> yay, yay, yay. Most artists have many different brands of paint, many different brands of brushes, many different brands of canvas. We tend to roam around just looking for sales and really awesome opportunities to upgrade our kit, but generally in our budget. So, you know, while it's true that there are some pro artists that are very, very, very brand specific, I think for most people, it's just sort of a, a little scramble between sales and opportunities. I like to think of it as opportunities. I'm going to just use just the pure phthalo blue. 
on her hair. And it's going to be a little different than the background. But the camera may not be able to see the difference, so oh, yeah, I apologize I for that. I'm it, still it, on a number four bright. It, that, that, that blue you're doing right now pops a lot more. Oh, does it? Okay. Oh, yeah. Do I never see? know what the camera can see because, you know, I yeah. mean, the camera lens is not a human eye. turn around look, you can eye. see on your monitor right now. I've got them both up so you can see there. Oh, yeah, you can really see it. So and this is the pure phthalo blue. A lot of you asked me if I was going to be doing yin min, and I am doing yin min. Yin min's coming. Um, but first I have to be able to tell you what paint you can use if you can't get the yin min because it's not widely available yet. And a little bit more about why that's exciting and why we as artists should be delighted that a new blue was discovered. It's like finding a new animal species. It's just super fun. You know, doesn't mean that like I got to worry in my neighborhood or on my street about a new animal species. I'm just happy when they find one. <laughs> I'm just doing just the phthalo and I'm just, oh, hey, don't startle me. This is my New York cup from when I was in YouTube Next Up. Um, I'm going to talk about it on a Sunday Funday show, but my very good friend Sarah Hall of Mommy Hacks that I know from Creator Day, who I said, oh my gosh, the minute you get to 10,000 subscribers, you've got to apply to Next Up. They're going to love you and you have to go to New York. She did, and she just found out she's going, and we're totally going to be Next Up buddies. Yay! I'm not dorkily excited about that in any way. I am. I I like having next up friends, like YouTube friends, like yeah. Chris, Chris, and um, I like I, I, I Chris, I, Stephanie, Ian, Lindsay. Well, no, Ian, I mean I can't tell Angela. you how nice it was. Like what Chris did for us the other day on or yesterday on yeah. his channel. I mean that just sort of uh, yeah, we, you know, just really well, and there's flattering Tim Charles and, and Random Panzer. There's a lot of people. It's a family. And you know, Ian, with all of his trip here, I I, I couldn't believe how much uh, how nice it was. All of all the people who came and said wonderful things to us from his channel. Yeah, um, that was super. Fun. YouTube can be a real family. It really between really the is. creators, we um we love each other and we love what the other people are doing. And even like when I have creators that maybe I'm not tight with, I still respect what they do respect it deeply there's mad respect for the skills it takes a lot to make these videos you know i'm not really sure how i feel on like the channels where they like pimple pop and stuff but no i'm just saying maybe not mad respect there but mostly i have mad respect it's just, I, I, look anybody who can pull a, pull a youtube channel off it's tough work it, it is. It's a lot it's of work. It's tough work. It doesn't matter whether, you know, it's, it doesn't matter how you're doing it. I think um, I find, like, the more I do this and the more I get up there, I get more, like, uh, DeFranco where I'm, like, I just respect that work. Yeah. If you're, if you're putting the time in, you're building the community, you're doing this, it's it's every day. It's, it, and, you know, it takes a commitment. And I respect that. So, you know. Yeah. All right. So we've got this base of hair in. Right, which is kind of cool, you know. In a little while, we'll pull. We might pull a tendril in front. <sighs> we may not. But the first thing that we've got to do is put out more blue because I used it all up. While you're putting out that blue, <laughs> I will scroll over here to my playlist Are and you? find something that's, you know, jammy jams. Got up there in that jam jam territory. What's going on? Because we're at, we are Sherpa. We have gotten over 300 likes. We've got like 245 people here hanging out with us. And they are insisting that little Miss Sherpa do some I wish dancing. I had a bubble machine. You know what? I think I have a bubble machine around here somewhere. But Why has it only got to be for the Rocky Horror Picture Show? Right? Bubbles should happen all the time. I keep saying that to John. When I'm designing artwork, you should full on blow bubbles on me so I'm more whimsical. He found it. It's a lot to set up, babe. Sunday, Sunday, we'll have bubbles. 
Sunday, fun day, we'll have bubbles. But, you know, it's really nice to have everybody here. And I wanted to just say thank you for everyone coming and hanging out. We love having this group of people here, and it's really a lot of fun. So don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. We're, this is one of those goofy days where we just... Uh, Sundays are goofy days. What it's can a good you do? Day. It's a good day to be goofy. It's a good day to be goofy. So I've got my number four bright. Ideally for here, I'm going to be using number four bright, number six bright, maybe a number eight bright if I see one. <laughs> Not taped down. Just to, changing my brush to make sure I'm always working in the size that um, makes me really happy. I'm going to take a little of my black over to my blue. If you have Prussian blue, you don't have to do that. Because it would already have that in there. And I'm going to lighten it. Let me wipe off my brush. If ever you have too much pigment and you're having trouble lightening, all you've got to do is wipe it off. And I'm going to come up here on the top of the nose, around the sides, right? Making a little triangle and painting up her delicate little nose. That's what I'm doing. just happy. Not good for your paint, but happy. <laughs> oh, sweetie, thank you. You know, um, sometimes we take ourselves so seriously as grown-ups. We get so busy adulting, we forget the importance of doing play and the value, the real value it has in our lives. And that, that's even for me, too. We yeah. get so busy adulting. I well, did a campfire with the kids, and they were reminding me how important play is. Yeah. So this quite light color is coming across her forehead and up the bridge of her nose. And I'm just feeling so good because the bubbles are falling on me, and now the world feels safer and better. <laughs> no, it just does. I'm going to... Everybody here agrees the bubbles just makes everything a little better. It does. Again, probably not good for my painting. <laughs> ah. But it's not really that toxic, and I'm also not trying to uh, create art that's going in the museum it, 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 of it is, art. It is playing with RoboCam a little bit, the little bubbles dancing. Out. Yeah, it's just RoboCam's like, I don't know what I'm looking at. <laughs> so I've painted around my eyebrows here a little bit. But you can see that I've got kind of this nice light color here. I'm going to add a little more blue into my mix. So see, it's just a little bit darker. And I'm going to come here on the inside very carefully and paint around. And I'm sorry if I end up being closer to an <laughs> hour 45 than an hour 20 today. I think I'm just personally needing the art space. And you know what? I think a lot of people are. Colleen saying this is really good for her heart. She needed this today. Yeah, I think they're just days we need it. And you know what? And, and uh, Ashley said the same thing. Janine echoed it. Eminem. Yay! Has, you know Our what? community I gets that, it. I think that we're all in a, we could use a little extra bubbles today. So. We all need extra bubbles and a little extra art today. I think. I think. I think it's good to, to think that if everyone should just get a bubble machine and have it plugged in so that you can occasionally just, you know, <laughs> have some bubbles sprinkle down kind of agree with that it's, it's not it's, oh, except for like don't put it near robocam because it, it it messes with robocam a little bit it does a little bit but so it's just <laughs> enjoying my bubbles you enjoy my bubbles too everybody take a deep breath Whoo! it's been an intense intense run hasn't mm -hmm. it Intense time of year. I've got. I made a darker color. I want to come underneath her nose a little bit, mm -hmm. where the shadow would be, just a little, just to make sure I have that. I'm just trying to get a little closer to her. Um, you know, I might even make the little triangle and then put the the nostrils back in. So see, it's just like that, right there. Yeah. While you've got this dark color, 
this really dark color come to half of her neck and bring that down and that way you've created the shadow you need sometimes in painting like a lot of what I'm doing like when I'm just with myself and I'm not teaching is that I am constantly looking for places to put the color I just mixed oh yeah yeah I'm like, where else could I put that oh, I like that color where else do I think that little sucker could go <laughs> I'm gonna come along her little face here, along the mm -hmm. outer edge. I'm kind of slowing down and painting her. Mm -hmm. And we're blending it softly here out into the black, but that'll make a difference later when we're putting in the lighter color. Gotcha. So now I gotta lighten this back up again. If you need to wipe it off, wipe it off. It can creep up your brush is what can happen. And if it's creeping up your brush, all you gotta do is wipe it off on the towel. Thank you, babe. You really, I know you're just being silly, but thank you. My mom's so funny. She's like, oh, well, you know, we didn't want to worry you. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it would have been, you know, I'm not, I, I'm not, like, I know she's okay. I know she's, like, super healthy, and I know everything is fine, and that's just a thing that happens. But it's, it's weird when stuff happens, because then it gets you thinking about everything. Yeah. And you just stop having, um that sort of light space. The Sheena are lucky because we have art. So if we need to, we go get our light space back. <laughs> By the way, John, that was happening while she was teaching a lesson. Wow. And she was like, I don't know, something's going wrong, but she didn't want to not, she didn't want to stop the YouTube thing. So <laughs> y'all who were with her in the last one, that was going on and then immediately after she went to the hospital. That is so crazy. Your mom That's is, my mom. Yeah, it totally is. <laughs> I'm just like, you know, I bet they would have let you just leave and go to the hospital. And she's like, I didn't want to worry anybody. <laughs> she's very, very serious about what she does. So that's funny. Uh, uh, gosh, so one of our Sherpettes here is... Uh, says she can't paint with her shoes on. She's always in wacky socks, and she's dying to know, is the Sherpa barefoot? I am not because this is a cement floor, and I'm wearing, um, I'll show them to you. They're kind of wearing... goofy, but yet overly <laughs> worn out Crocs. Crocs. Okay. Um, and that's just because... Um, show me your shoes, Sherpa. <laughs> I'm sorry, everybody in Asia. Because um, I know that's rude in some parts of the world, but for those of you that were curious... <laughs> uh, so that's what it is. I have these goofy Crocs, and um, I have a also a gel mat underneath me, and that way I can stand at the easel for a long period of time, and my legs don't get tired. On my own, John can test to this. I have I have many many garish fuzzy socks. Yes, she does. Really, really not cute or sexy fuzzy socks. <laughs> You're actually pretty close on this, aren't you? Yeah. I actually am. Well, there's still the butterfly. The butterfly. You know, I'm just going to, what we're going to do is we're just going to do it right today. Okay. We're not going to rush. We're just going to do it right. I Agreed. apologize. That's just where we're at. You know, I like to go faster for replayability sometimes, but sometimes it's just you got to do the job right. Mm hmm. And I've got some, you know, kind of drill down lessons coming later this week for everybody who, who needs those. Oh, yeah, that's true. I'm going to just paint the other half and all the rest of this in with this lighter color. But you can see how that nice shadow creates um, space. Like shape and dimension to her neck. Interesting. I'm going to switch to a number eight because... So see, I'm just dipping it in. But you'll notice that all my bristles are the same color even as I'm... This is a Richeson 7530. Same thing though on filament, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And that's just about water. And everything. So brushes can make a real difference in your experience. Paint, canvas, all of it really can. But I've known people that could paint with mud and rocks. So, <laughs> which I've done. <laughs> Andy goals worthy. There's some artists that um, don't be limited. You know? 
Don't be limited. Don't feel like you can't. Because don't feel like you can't because you didn't go to some school. Don't feel like you can't because you're a particular age. Don't don't give yourself can'ts. And I would just They're like not to useful. thank everybody who's here with us. I mean, we've got we've had this huge crowd of people with us here, but over two, like 240 people here pretty much the entire time. John's trying not to tell me the time so right I don't now. speed up and panic. <laughs> you know, you guys are wonderful to have with us. It really is. I mean, um, Cinnamon and I were talking about it. Without you guys, this would not be the same. The only reason I can even do this is because you're here, believe yeah. it or not. Um, yeah. Someday we'll talk more about that, but thank yeah. you guys. So. Mm. Lips. Shall we put some Should, in? We've been doing lots of lips lately. Shall I plug one of our other videos? <laughs> For those of you that if you haven't know. already seen it, the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Yay! All right. So we're going to take a little black and mix it into Milo's Ring Crimson. It makes it quite dark. I'm going to come and do this bottom lip. I'm going to zoom in on that bottom lip. I'm going to do the bottom lip. Now, I heard the cutest thing that the, that the top lip was called a Cupid's bow. Yeah. I had not heard that before, and I thought that was just the... Isn't that sweet? Yeah. Or some people do. I don't know that all the world does, but I think some people do. I like it. I'm going to do a nice little Cupid's bow up here. Pull it out a little bit past there. So I like the dark color first. Because then what I like to do is come over, I wipe off my brush, I might wipe it off on the towel, is I have a little of my, now I'm going to put some more out because I need some more, white, titanium white, which I really like. Um, hey, there's a speaking of the ghostess with the mostest. Is it ghost hostess? She's here. Hey, ghost hostess. And everybody is giving her nice art hugs and high fives. Did she She's, bring the donuts? You know what? I have not seen She's donuts late. yet. She's got to bring the donuts. You late? You got to bring the donuts. No. So I made I made some pink with the alizarin in my white, and I'm going to come along the top here and pull that down. But I'm going to leave a little shadow where the lips meet. Mm -hmm. You see that? Just a little bit. And then I'm going to come get a little of my Lizard Kimson and a little white and come right underneath here. Look at this, right at the center. I'm just going to shade that out. How nice is that? Now, how do you so consistently get the same color? Practice is really what it is. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I don't paint from the tube in general, and I'm constantly mixing. And you'll find as you're constantly mixing, that you'll, can, you'll be able to go back and get it again and again. If you're new, that's why I'm always like, work from the edge of your paint. Don't mix big swatches of paint together because you won't be able to remix. But if you're practicing with little swatches and little bits, you're gonna find, oh wait, I can get that gray again. I can get that gray yeah, again. Yeah, and if I can give a, like some analogies for people. I'm gonna pull know, some black, just so you know. You know, Get in her eyebrows while you're giving an analogy. Absolutely. It's like in music, when you know what middle C is or when you're cooking and you know what uh, a chocolate chip cookie should taste like. You know, there's some things that just come with experience and repetitive knowledge. And I've watched Cinnamon and I myself have watched her do this so much now. Um, but for sure, it's not talent based. Well, I, I, it's skill based. It's skill, perseverance, determination. Yeah. And, and you can totally. You These know, are all learnable. Yeah, I've seen lots of people come up here at, through you know through our classes and working with us, and, and gosh, guys, it's so gratifying to see you guys just master these skills. So, super much so. I'm gonna outline the eyes with the black. This is a number two shader. This is a small detail brush. It gives me a nice consistent line that I like. So if you have an inexpensive brush that's shedding on you, oh, suggestions so for getting sorry. those out? Throw it out. <laughs> what about the little hairs? Just tweezer oh, them out? Oh, to get them out, yeah. Um, sometimes I'll take my nail and I'll pull them off and paint over it. I mean, it's happened to me. It happens to everybody. That, yeah, it happens to everybody. And some brushes will shed a hair or two. 25 hairs is too many hairs. Yeah, a new brush, you know, like there's some, some fibers that may not get fully glued in, and that's just, yeah. you know, part of any brush making. But... 
Within your first or second or time of using it, you should have no more lost fibers. Yeah. Then it's certainly after a good washing, it, they should be nice and. I'm gonna have this looking up at the moon. Yeah. It's gonna be a little dot. A dot. See. Then on the same plane, hopefully, so she doesn't end up being wonky-eyed. Another little dot. Giving us the sense that she's looking somewhere in particular. Now I'm going to come around her eyes, my number four bright, some blue and a little of my black. I'm all jumping around, where are you, what are you doing? Actually, I might have to add one more black thing before I do this, oh, with my more. little brush. I think I do. <laughs> one more black thing. One more black thing, it's important, because I changed up the nose to a more uh, accurate to the character nose. Oh, did you? Yeah, I'm even change up the thumbnail when it's all done. There, there we, we go. go. That was really important about her, and I missed it the first time, and it, it irked me, so. Oh, yeah. I really, really wanted to make sure I got that the second time. For all of you who, I mean, for, for a lot of people, The Corpse Bride is a big deal. That's their that's their movie. It's uh, not uh, Nightmare Before Christmas, it's Corpse Bride. And so I just wanted to make sure for all the people who really, really love her mm -hmm. that I did right. that. So I mixed another very dark blue. I'm going to come around the eye. <laughs> So, uh, and then underneath here as well, guys. We've got a really great question. Say so we're coming with the blue. Isn't that nice. Yeah, and you did a you did a really great blog here recently that kind of addressed this. Yes, I did. Which, well, well, I don't know. What did, did I do? I'm blogging all the time. Yes, I did. What but, is it? So you just you just did a you know yesterday you, did, you wrote that really great blog and so uh, so sin I, and I and I am horrible pronouncing names here Cynthia. Uh, asks any questions on how to deal with unwanted painting requests, <sighs> which is an interesting thing when you're an artist. Yeah, like like people just want you to paint paint for free for them. Well, and and they don't always understand what they're asking. No, they don't. They you know, don't. I can't tell you how many people are like, "Come paint my birthday." Or yeah, it's like, you know, can you paint a you know picture of a great horned dragon with my two year old? I'm grabbing and some white dog. and adding some definition in her eye of the white. You know, it's yeah. A... Um, this is a thing, and what you have to realize is, do people? Well, I think people do ask doctors for free medical advice all the time, but most doctors generally create a space where they're like, no, that ain't. I I do this for a living, and come see come see my office. So what I would say is, is that if you're getting um, requests for free paintings mm -hmm. and it's just ongoing and you're like, dude, I don't even want to be, I, these, I don't want to be doing that. Uh, the trick is to have a rate card. Yeah. It's amazing how many people are not interested when they got to pay. Yeah. And, and I think that. But the, then it's also interesting how many people will pay you a good rate and you'll find yourself accidentally making some money. Yeah, and that's I think that the that that is the underlying message here is that you, when people approach you and they treat you like a business, then you can respond as a business and yeah. say, "This is, you know, if you want me to paint a picture, I do this for a living. I get so much per I'm inch using or, my number five over zero detail brush. And I'm gonna put in some eyelashes while John's talking about that. I'm just, you know, I'm supporting your statements. Is I think okay. what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't mind you talking about that. I'm just letting everyone know what I'm doing. And I just, yeah, I, I don't want to get in the way of, like, I will talk all day at you. John's actually the chattiest one out of the two of us, mm -hmm. but only if he's not feeling shy. Right. So I'm doing the little downward lashes. I Lashes are hard for people. Um, I have a stroke that I practiced over a period of years, and I can describe it to you. I press hard at the beginning of the stroke, and I curve and lighten it. And I've developed a muscle memory for this stroke that gives me a lot of success. What I can tell you about it is practice it on a sheet of paper mm -hmm. and see if you can get that mm -hmm. easily. And when you can, then you're not going to have any trouble with your eyelashes. But this is probably not going to feel like lashes to you. Yeah. So they, they, have, they press a little hard and then they curve and flick. You know, one of the great things, there's a lot of comments people are echoing in there that they've had issues with people asking for paintings and how much would you charge me and rate cards are a great way of answering And that. just also, this is this is a good conversation to have with yourself. In the last blog I talked about, what's your art mission? Why are you painting? Yeah. Why are you doing this? Because we all have different reasons. Like, um, my answer used to be that I liked to create art that caused people to stop and re-examine their perceptions about the world. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and then as I started doing this, I redefined my mission statement as helping as many people around the world discover that they're creative, dynamic individuals and that they can paint. So I had this mission statement, but everybody has a different mission statement. Yours might be like, relax, chill out. Yours might be a relief from pain and mm -hmm. a distraction. Your might, yours might be dealing with depression. Um, yours might be to just have a good time with my friends and do something that isn't money driven. I mean, you just have a, the list could be really, really long. It may not be ever to sell a painting and it's perfectly okay to be like, I don't sell or give away my artwork. I just do it for me is an acceptable answer. Yeah. It is not your duty to give artwork to people. No. But if you're thinking I might like to sell it, then definitely do a rate card, which is yeah. like determine. And I've written articles on it. I'm going to post uh, my pricing thing and on the website soon um you know just figure out a price and then you're like yeah that's my price your price yeah. is your price and we've got some stuff on the forums uh that we you know where we're starting to talk about that a little bit and yeah. we're considering putting up a uh, a group for you know for young artists who are considering pursuing more of that professionalism Profession i'm going to take a little my thalo blue Oops. bead out on my number oh. eight right well hold on just like let me get back over so i can switch my switch i'm going to add right. a little white to it I'm sorry I'm moving along. I'm a little bit like the Terminator today, aren't I? <laughs> so sorry. I'm sorry, babe. No, no. It, I think so that I've what's... I've just got this little bead, and I've just picked up a little white, a little blue, a little white, a little blue. And, it's... and I'm going to come here and see how it's just dispersing off my brush as a little highlight in her hair. Oh, that's pretty. Isn't that beautiful? I'm just painting a little, a little body and... It's so funny how it's important for you and I to have this chemistry while we're on air to like be able to go back and forth between answering questions bit. and and painting. Yeah. And so a lot, you know, a lot of times Sin and I are just like, you know, we just kind of you have to go with the flow, you know, trying to make sure that you guys both get the questions answered and we get all of this painting in because there's just so much to cover. There really is. And I'm really appreciative of having a team member like John. He is as he is who he seems to be. Uh, a talky guy who pushes buttons. Ha 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 ha. He is, and I really appreciate it. And he's always been that. We we are kind of on team. Kind of. Kind of on team. All right. So see how I've created that streakiness that's defined her hair. I'm gonna get a little white, just a little bit. You can see the bead, and pull a little blue, and come this side. Oh no, more. Up more top. Pretty hair. I'm up there. I like to start the stroke at the top of the hair. The Except when you don't. Pretty light. It skips. I twist the brush. See, notice how I'll twist my brush to okay, create thick and yeah. thin lines? Now that's something I'm going to come in here. So I'm going to follow that brush stroke. So hold on just a second. Let me speed up the camera See if and I can zoom do it again. in. All right. So I'll come down here. And then as I'm stroking, I might twist my brush okay. to create a stroke. Yeah, it's hard to catch all that. Well, I, got, I think I got it a couple times. So. Yeah, it's, it's something that artists do. We we twirl the brush in our fingers, and we forget to describe we're doing that in workshops. <laughs> when it's actually pretty important to how this painting yeah. got made. So I'm picking up some more blue. There's a lot you start to do unconsciously in art. So now I've got her hair in, and I feel pretty good about that. I'm going to put in her... Um, Veil. I'm gonna put out. I have my white paint out. I'm gonna get a brush. This is actually a number six bright that has been left. This is what happens when you leave your brush in water. They explode. It, this is the. It's called pop. I call it pop. She pops them. I I, 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 pop I call them grenading. Now, initially, when I did this, I really liked my my see through veil, right? So I'm gonna get my white. I'm gonna get, I have it just on the tip of this brush, and it's dry. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to come here on the edge of the bristles, and I'm going to take a line oh. down, flowing, soft pressure, off this way. There. Then I'm going to very lightly, with the dry brush, brush some br like paint here. But I'm not going to paint out everything I'm seeing. See? I'm just dusting this. I'm making flowing lines to imply fabric, but not painting what's underneath. I really actually didn't want to paint out everything, and then just some stuff happened in the design process, and I did. <laughs> and I was like, man, when I teach this, I'm not painting that out. 
Wow. So this is just about having these little lines, but still showing. See how that looks more like a veil? Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> Luna's, Thank you, Luna. Luna's watching over here with me. She's she's like, I wanted to watch. Can I be quiet and watch? So she's been <laughs> Did over Did I do a good job, sweetie? Yes. Thank you, pumpkin. She's been over here watching while she's eating her. So her the veil is about letting what is sh is behind it show through and not painting it all in. Then I'm going to take my little number two shader. I'm going to load it with paint. And I'm going to make some little vines that are curling up here at the top. That's her little flowers that remember from the movie. Those are really hard to see there. They are. And I'm going to make my little roses like we taught you guys with uh, Angela Anderson and drip roses. But I'm going to come back with white once these are dry. Oh, so this is just the under painting? Yeah, this is just the first layer. It okay. shows really well in person and is hard for the camera to see. Let but me zoom in. I, I can kind of see them, but, but they're, yeah. yeah. So we're going to let that dry a bit and then we can come back with white and highlight and define that. And while we're letting that have its little moment, we're going to put in our butterfly. 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 So I want my butterfly to be across here, right? Taking up kind of the corner of the canvas. So right here where the sky meets this, I'm going to do a little round button. Little round circle. Thank you, Luna. <laughs> She's like, okay, I like that. <laughs> then we're going to do a little kind of pearl bead. It's a little tapering bead shape, leaf shape for the body. It's hard to see over the dark blue. Yeah, it's real hard to see that black. Yeah, I there. know. You know, it's, trust me. And then the thorax, which is about, it's a longer, thinner shape of the body. We can just barely see Here's it what I'm going to do. You don't do this. I'm going to oh. do this. I'm going to take some white paint. Oh, you're going to lighten it up. Just Actually, I was going to say I can go in there and. Look at this. I'm oh. just going to show you where it is with these strokes. Okay, that, that helps. Can you see it a little better now? I'm going to also go and crank up that camera. Okay. Well, but we're about to do the wings. It doesn't hurt my butterfly to outline it like that. I'm unharmed. There it's we go. unharmed. I pumped it up just a touch. I'm going to put out more blue because the wings are predominantly blue. Got that little dab of blue there. I'm going to get my blue, my straight blue. I might need some glazing medium because it's so hot in my studio. And the first little wing I'm going to draw is the back wing. And the back wing is going to where the main part of the body meets the thorax, I'm going to draw a little arcing line back. And I'm going to draw a little mirror arcing line back. I might oh. add a little white to mine so you just see it really well. I was able to bring that camera up just a touch so we could see that contrast between the blue and the black better. Now, I want these to be wide and then taper out, so I'm going to make a line right here coming out. This one needs to be slightly shorter than the wing, and we're going to scallop the wing. Can we see that? Oh, yeah. All right. Then we're going to take our blue, and we're going to paint this in. About halfway up the wing. Okay. 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 I'd actually really looked at the movie <laughs> to get a sense of the butterflies. Oh, I know. That was, I saw you watch that earlier. That was really pretty. You know, th this is... Uh, halfway point. Wipe your brush. Wipe it off, but don't rinse it. See, I've wiped it, but I haven't rinsed it. Yeah. Now go get some white paint. Load up your brush. And come from the inside, soft stroke, and blend it into the wing. Can you see how that's done? Thank you. <laughs> I love you, Luna. <laughs> She's my biggest fan. <laughs> oh, it's, did you know, uh, so Little Brush Kiki just jumped Hi, on. Hi, Kiki. And she said that today is her mom's birthday. Happy birthday to your mom. So I think her mom's name is Kiara. So yes. happy birthday to Kiara. Happy birthday, Kiara. Oh, and I want to say hi to Alan's Brook. Oh, but hello. Unless I'm wrong. Uh, <laughs> I just had a panic attack. Well, look. I have name problems, so if it's we Brandy can't pronounce and I things. just had a moment. 
I apologize. The, the the truth is is that we love you guys so much that you know we're that we're here for you. We love you. Know that you're in our thoughts and and hearts every day. Every day. So <laughs> ain't my next week. <laughs> so I'm gonna come just below the head. I'm gonna actually put a little white in my stroke. You do yours with just blue, but I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna arc up. Oh yeah! Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Woo! -hoo. And also arc up over here. Then I'm going to very carefully pull back and taper into the wing. Very carefully pull back. This one's harder to do because it's off the canvas. Taper into the wing. Hope you go scroll down a little bit. Right now there. I'm going to do the same thing with this that I did in the first place, which is blue to the halfway point. If your blue isn't covering because you have student paint, do add a smidge of white to it to improve the coverage, the opacity of your paint. Sometimes student paint will be like a glaze and it just won't cover well, so you can either do two strokes or add a little white. So I'm going to just, I think I got that right, make sure that I've got this halfway point. What? Well, Halfway point. Okay. Oh. Wipe your brush. And it's April's birthday too. Hi, uh, April. Another one there. Wipe your brush. Get your white. <laughs> the, and they have hashtag show your shoes. They're wanting to see shoes in the in the in the <laughs> chat. So they're gonna they're gonna be posting up everyone's funky shoes later on today. I think in the. In <laughs> you guys are the best. On the on the Facebook page. So see how that creates that blend of the wing. We should do that on the forums too. This is how that, how I get that blend on that wing. Soft brush brush pressure, and I'm just letting the wet paint here and the paint there dry come together, and that's how that we get that kind of cool blended white wing at the center. Okay, so once that is there, right? Yep. Go ahead. Actually, I think you can probably just do it right now. And using your brush, I need to grab the fluid. I meant to grab this. You you're gonna make <laughs> dots. You're you're messing with me here. Sorry, I'm gonna make a circle. Okay. Doing that twirl you like so oh, much, yeah, where I use cool. my brush. You pivot on the edge of the brush. Yeah. And make that perfect circle with that. I, mean, I think so perfect cool. is strong, but well, I make a circle. It's a really good circle. It's like this is a cool trick to get a circle. Is you just rotate on the edge of the brush to make that. I'm gonna do one here. It's gonna be a little more of an oblong, so I've gotta go like this. Now, it's okay that the blue is coming through. You just need to know where it is because actually we're gonna do a weird swirly thing later. That's super cool looking, <laughs> but later. So just make your circle there. Now, get your two inch. Take a little of your white over to your alizarin crimson. And along the edge of the wing, kind of do a little scallop. Can you see this little scallop? Yeah. This is important to the piece because this is how she ties in to her world. This is because her lips are red. Right. And the butterfly it talks about the life that's still in her, I think, artistically. It's my opinion. <laughs> that's how I interpreted it. I could be just making a lot of a cartoon. I'm going to go around each circle with this red. By the way, we're almost done. I know. It's looking so good. Circle around here. Can you guess where the other circles go? <laughs> <laughs> red circle around there and red circle around there. Rinse your brush off. So, Penny wants to know when we're going to see me paint. I don't I don't, I don't know. know. I'm not I good, want to. I'm not a painter, really, though. He's I'm artistic, a, though. I'm a button pusher. I am adding a little white highlight and definition to my butterfly. No, no, you need those. And I'm going to make an antenna, and I'm going to use white because that's what's going to show up against my background. So see that antenna? I've got my two-inch shader. I've got the fluid paint I used for stars earlier, and I'm going to make a little swirl. See the swirl? Oh, yeah. Oh, there you go. Swirl. What do you think, Luna? Is she there? She likes it. She. Oh, no. 
All right, so now that we have that in, we're gonna come up here and add a little definition of hearts, and not hearts, roses. And I'm doing the little brick shape so I, when I do these little weird makeshift roses, what I'm doing is I do a little C. It's got a little friend that comes around it. And like a brick, I just lay those little strokes around. Guess what? We're pretty much done. I know. It's looking cool. The, I, I'm going to define my swirls with this white paint. Now, I noticed that you kind of loosely go over those. You don't exactly follow no. them. You could. If you're a very, very technical person... You could absolutely go over those very, very specifically, and that's okay. In art, you're just being yourself. You're not trying to make me happy. You're not trying to make your friends and family happy. You're not trying to make anybody happy but yourself. And almost what I would say is whatever personality traits that you get grief for, like I get grief about being loud and colorful and chatty. Right. I, some of you may get that grief. I think our community kind of gets that grief sometimes. Yeah. Right. Be that in your painting. Maybe you're really organized and, and everything's alphabetized. And it's very neat. Be that in your painting. Mm -hmm. Be yourself. If, if, if wherever, whatever you have to be in life. I don't know. I don't know what your job is like. I don't know how supported you are in being yourself. But here, be that. Don't apologize in this space. Yeah. Ever. All right, I'm going to load up my signing brush. You don't have to sign. You can just sign if you want to. And I'm going to sign my name right here. And that means that I am coming to the end. And I'm going to have to tell you guys that I love you. I think you're beautiful. I appreciate you making time for creativity in your lives and each other. Know that it matters. Not everything that has a GDP is the only thing that's important. We did it. We did. We made the corpse ride. And total pain along. And I feel like I, yeah, you could do the original as I did, but I really like that. I'm so sorry I changed it up. That's art. Oh, I know. <laughs> it's looking really good. And I liked adding the stars. I think it improves the Yeah. personally. I really like how all of this has turned out. You know, this is one of this has been one of my um, one one of the ones that I really enjoyed. Actually, look over here. Preview. Do I have? There it goes. Okay, I'm getting all of our buttons pushed and mm. ready to go. You know, I I forgot to mention that um, <coughs> we've got uh, we've got a bunch of new features that are coming up on the website that we're going to be turning on this week. We've got some new some cool new places for people to come and hang out. We're going to be trying some new groups and forums and restructuring all that. So uh, making it easier for the closed captioners. We're making it, yeah, we're going to close I don't know how that would be group. easier because closed captioning seems really hard to me. But thank you guys for doing that. You're making art education more accessible for people around the world. Yeah. And for members of the deaf community. And that is a big deal. Yeah. And guys, thank you for coming and hanging out with us today. We really appreciate it. Love seeing you guys with us every day. Be good and watch, watch the channel. Cool stuff dropping this week. Oh, Saturday I'm not going to be live. Saturday, you're not going to be live. I have to uh, go to Renaissance Festival for my mother-in-law's birthday. Oh, yeah. Well, that's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to be through Renaissance Festing. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be Vincent Van Gogh medieval. Medieval style. I'm going to post a picture. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Looking forward to it, guys. Love you. Guys you. Be good. Bye.